You are comfortably zoned with me, the zigzag man from Alameda, California, as per usual, at the Lagoon at the 420 Studio, and um, we got one of my favorite people in the entire world, and I'm not just blowing smoke, Bert and I were in the first grade together, if not the second grade um, as well, uh, Marty Rose, AP. New York, New York, from Jackson Heights. How you doing, Bert? I'm doing fine. How's everything in the All right. eastern, part, and part of the country? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sunny. It's a little windy in uh, Northern California today, but it's supposed to heat up in the next few days. I'm and sure. um, it's, it's beautiful. I'm sure it's beautiful in New York right now. Well, today was nice. Last two days we had some pretty heavy thunderstorms and lots of rain. But the rest of the week will ah. be good, so play ball. <laughs> play ball, and we uh, we're coming into what is technically not the second half of the season. That started two or three weeks ago. We're coming sure. into almost crunch time, and uh, as – our guests know we talk New York Met ball uh, when we get together, Mert. And uh, the Mets, for the first time in a long time, plan to be buyers, if not traders, rather than sellers. Well. Um, uh, um, I mean, they want to trade Cologne. Uh, they're looking for a left fielder to address, yeah. to, to address that problem. And um, they're not talking about trading Murphy, who is not one of your favorites. Am I correct? Well, I mean, he's you know he's he's a good hitter, but that's that's it. I mean, he's an adequate fielder, and he's a terrible base runner. Um, you know, but let's face it, they have a, a, a lack of hitting on this team, although. Lately, it seems like they've been coming alive a little bit. But absolutely, Dude has been coming alive. Grandison's been coming alive. Yeah, uh, since they moved Grandy the to uh, the leadoff, they moved Grandy to the leadoff spot. He's been doing a lot better. So. And showing some power, which um, always helps yeah. in the leadoff spot, as Ricky, as Ricky Henderson proved. Right. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, and we talk a lot off the air, if not um, by phone, by Twitter, because my, I have a lot of trouble with email. I, yeah, I have had probably over the, the last, you know, 12 years since this has begun, probably had three or four different emails. I cannot get my email to compose. I can oh. read emails to come in. I, I have no... It's Yahoo, if anybody knows why, um, I'll be damned, but I just, uh, yeah. so we can, we talk on Twitter, and I, ironically, I get the message that there's been a, a Twitter directed my way from Yahoo, which right, right. directs me, yeah, which uh, directs me instantly to the Twitter message, so it's all cool, but sometimes... I'm going to need to send an email, email, not just Facebook or whatever. And um, it's um, going to be one of those problems in technology that I'm famous for always enduring all through my life. You could always I, try, uh, try something different like G- Gmail from Google, you know? I Yeah, I have a Google account, um, and I'll probably end up doing that, but... What a pain in the ass that is, taking all your contacts and putting it, putting them in somewhere else. Yeah, that, can be, that can be done. That can be done, but that's not fun for me either. So um, the Internet taketh, the Internet taketh, giveth and taketh away at the same time. It's terrific for moments like this, though. So um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the pitching, Let, let's talk the pitching. The pitching is terrific. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, you know, like in the beginning of the year, it was all uh, Wheeler and, uh, you know, Nice and G. And, um, you know, that, that was pretty.
pretty much it. You know, you got to wait till next year for Harvey to come back. But this kid, uh, DeGrom, seems like he came out of nowhere. Um, right. He's been he he's been great. He's been really really good. I mean, his record Absolutely. doesn't show it because his first few games they scored like one run or zero runs. You know when he pitched, but uh, the last couple of times they gave him runs, and he's he's gotten the win. He's got a 3.18 and 12 starts, and um, you know he he looks good. And then they have Syndergaard and Montero still down in AAA, so you know right. Syndergaard you, you expect for next year. I don't know about Montero. He came up, he didn't look all that great, but. You know, next year he could could develop. So they're going to have like an excess of uh, starting pitching, and I I know starting pitching can go down awfully quick. Very uh, very, uh, very quickly, especially in the day and age of having Yan- surgery. Yeah, i.e. the Yankees who've lost four out of their five starters. But you still might want to you know if you if you got a a chance to trade for. A, you know, a big bat, and uh, one of one of these guys uh, is going to have to go because they really, you know, if they if they could really get a hold of uh, a big RBI man, uh, they could they could make some noise next year. They could, right? And that great. could come from uh, international ways. Uh, you know, guys signing from different countries that don't go through the draft. That's true. Um, Cuba, for instance, Cespedes with the A's came on very quickly. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Given everything, given the, given the fact that I, I, when I get the chance to mention this, I do. Cespedes came up as a, a center fielder in Cuba, and uh-huh. a pretty darn good one. He's fast. He's a, got a terrific arm. Chris, Coco Chris, is admittedly a Terrific center fielder, but he's got a wag on. And it would have been easier for all concerned if Chris would have dropped his ego at the time and moved over to left field to compensate for his arm. Uh-huh. Let's let Cespedes play center field. I mean, this is, we're going back two, two and a half years ago. It would have been nice to let him play center field and ease his transition yeah, have you, have you, to a new country, a new league, and the way the ball comes off the bat at a different angle, all that stuff. Chris didn't do it. Didn't do that. Uh-huh. And I will say, he surprised me. He's got. He is a tremendous talent. He really ignites that team. He's. Uh-huh. Um, he's got it all going for him. Sands his arm, but there's something about him. And um, over the years, that um, I can never root for this guy. Yeah, I appreciate that he's good, but I can't root for him. So I have to kind of just babble that out to you. <laughs> As I'm really enjoying the age. Yeah, and there are there are players like that. I, I wanted I even made a little note of this when we talked a little bit. I wanted to talk about two guys on the, in the Mets minor league farm system that are both sons of former center fielders, and uh, I don't, I don't, can't think of their first names offhand. But Lenny Dykstra and Nails, who's really had it go south for him over the last few years, and Lee yeah. Mazzilli, um both have sons playing in the minors, and both are. I made some copy of. Their leaderboard. Both are doing quite well and progressing. Um, yeah. At what rate? I can't. I can't tell you because the prospects a prospect. But it's always interesting to me. To, interesting to me when a father and son um, play. So I wanted to make note of that. And yeah. um, they emerged that for fifty some odd years we've been following this team. It's been a long time now since <laughs> since we had anything positive to talk about, and um, but over the years, the '86 team. Uh, happy birthday, Don Clendenin! By the way, without Don, yeah. the late Don Clendenin, so it's really not going to 
me. <laughs> These wishes aren't really going to go go far, but I'm thinking about you because without Don Clendenin, there was no 1969 Mets. That's right. That's right. Um, he was a great acquisition for Montreal, a terrific hitter who battled some demons over the years. But um, it's his birthday, so there you go, Mert. And um, mm-hmm. let's continue to continue to do this on a very regular basis. It's my favorite of all segments. And um, we got happy days coming down the road. I don't wish the Yankees ill will. I, over the years, I un- respect them unbelievably. I mean, uh-huh. they've had three separate dynasties. But I can't say I'm totally unhappy that they're not going in the direction that the Mets seem to be going in. And, um, yeah. I mean, this, is, this city has always been competition between – teams yeah. for loyalty for the back pages of the sports section and yeah, well, I don't give me some taste I'm out here in California I don't get to see the back of the post at the, the back of the news give me some taste on uh, um, people getting behind this young team oh yeah yeah uh, in fact uh, I got sports, uh, sports I, I got the post from Tuesday in front of me here and you know they got the okay. mid mid-season report card for both teams. And on, on the back, oh, this, guy, wow. Joe, this guy Joel Sherman, who writes for the Post, um, big picture of Curtis Granderson in the back, big letters, Metville, okay? And under Joel Sherman, it says, amazing chance to take city over from Yankees. So... I, what, what he means by that is that the Yankees really seem to be in decline because um, they got very few, uh, very few players in the minors, and their, their team is aging or hurt. And the Mets got all right. these young guys coming up, and so the feeling is now. My feeling is that, you know, you got your hardcore Met fans and you got your hardcore Yankee fans. But you also have your fair weather fans who, you know, which team is winning, I'm rooting for them. There's always there's a lot of people that are like that, you know? They get tired. I know, I, talking, I know. I we can't guy, we cannot understand that. Our loyalty yeah, I was talking is, to a guy in my in is, my office. Yeah, I was talking to a guy in my office and I know he was a Met fan, so I start, I stop him in the hallway, and I, you know, talk about the Mets. He goes, "Yeah, I gave up on them. I went to the Yankees." I said, "Oh, jeez, you got to be kidding me!" But there, there what? are a lot of people <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So uh, well, I've gone to them in the sense that I, a begrudging respect. Can you imagine a franchise? <laughs> 26 World Series in 100 years, 100 yeah. some odd years. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And this week also, Babe Ruth played his first game in the majors 100 years ago this week. Wow, yeah, I think some, I think they mentioned that someplace. Uh... best way I could put it. Um, this will uh, keep us up the big time. Um, but some days you got to just say what comes to mind. Yeah. Thanks for being here, my friend. All right. Zigzag, man. All right. We'll wrap it up. And uh, I will remind everybody, as I do, um, um, just keep your humor dry and your dreams wet and keep on keeping on. Have a great day. All right, you too. Good talking to you. Bye now.